you for joining our broadcast today. We're so glad to have you. Now, remove all distractions and prepare yourself to receive a powerful and encouraging word from the Lord that's guaranteed to give you instructions now for your next. We also want to encourage you to sow into this ministry. There are three ways that you can give. You can use Cash App, which is dollar sign B-O-T-F-C-C. You can give on our website, buildersofthefaith.com. And you can download the Giveify app and search Builders of the Faith. Thank you for your generosity. our broadcast today we're so glad to have you now remove all distractions and prepare yourself to receive a powerful and encouraging word from the Lord that's guaranteed to give you instructions now for your next we also want to encourage you to sow into this ministry there are three ways that you can give you can use cash app which is dollar sign b-o-t-f-c-c you can give on our website, buildersofthefaith.com, and you can download the Giveify app and search Builders of the Faith. Thank you for your generosity.
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Robert Brown, Senior Pastor of Builders of the Faith Community Church. And I'm coming live from my studio today with a special end of the year message just for you. And I pray to God that the Father has blessed you richly throughout this week as you was able to spend time with your friends and family and, and colleagues and celebrate the birth of Christ and Christmas. It's a powerful time of the year. It's an opportunity where the church gets an opportunity to share the love of Christ through acts of giving and just smiling at different people and sharing the love of God. Listen, I want you to do something for me because this is a special service. This is different for us. This is Sunday morning live in the streaming studio as opposed to a live worship service, a live experience. And there is a word from the Lord today. So I want to allow you an opportunity to help me like and share the message. We want to try to get everybody online. I don't want you to miss this impartation. I want you to be a part of this. So if you can go ahead, grab that mobile device like I'm about to do, grab my device, and let's start liking and sharing it with those who are following us. There's somebody that needs a word from the Lord today, and I believe God's going to use you as an instrument in his hand to guide them and lead them right into a place where they can begin to spare, to share the word of the Lord. So let's like and share. This is good today. Amen. This is going to be good. Give me just a minute. I'm going to do what y'all doing. I'm going to like and share with other folk because I want people to be a part of what God is doing here at Builders of the Faith. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. And so let me start seeing who's online with me. I see my wife, my son is here, Micaiah, Shannon. I see you guys online. Why not start greeting me so I know I'm preaching the builders of the faith. There's Eric. I see you, Eric. All right. Let's go ahead. I want to say hello to some people this morning while I'm drinking my tea. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, good morning, Pastor. I'm here. Good morning, Pastor. I'm with you. All right, Miss Finn, I see you. Hey, daughter Tanisha, I see you. I love you. Come on, encourage your pastor this morning. I see you, Sakita. All right. That's Ricky, Elder Ricky. I see you. That's Ben, Pastor Ben. Good morning. Come on. All right, Joy, I see you. Michael Smith, let's let's. I'm just watching. I'm just watching a few people here before we get started. I see you, Danielle. All right, Nardis. Today is going to be a great day. All right, Ebony, I see you, Sandra. Yes, Amen. I saw the other Westcott all the way from Georgia this morning online. I see you. Let's get online. Let's encourage people today. It's going to be a great time today. I see you, Paula. I see you, Nikki. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So while we're while we're doing it, I want to give you a couple of things real quick before I dive into the message this morning. I want to give you a few things that are going to carry us through this last week of the year. A couple of announcements that are very important that I want you to grab hold to of and and keep it in your bosom. Right. So here's the first announcement. Uh, we're going to have Tuesday service. That's coming up Tuesday. It's going to be virtually only. Virtual only Tuesday night. This coming Tuesday, it is virtual only. Virtual only, all right? So I want you to be able to, wherever you're at at 7 o'clock on Tuesday night, pause, pull up the link. You're going to get a text blast from the office that's giving you the link concerning Tuesday night virtual service. It is a special service, and I want to make sure that we pass, share the word, and spread it around so that everyone has an opportunity to be a part of that, all right? So the other thing that I want to talk about this morning is our New Year's Day face down service. Now, we're not having a New Year's Eve service, but at nine o'clock Saturday in the sanctuary, January the 1st, 2022, we're going to kick off our 21 day consecration. And we're going to do it with a face down press service from nine to 10 and a communion involved in that as well. We're going to kick the year off giving our hearts over to the Father to bless us and guide us throughout 2022. So I want you to mark that on your calendar. January the 1st, 2022, 9 a.m., face down, kicking off our consecration right here in the sanctuary of Builders of the Faith. Amen? want to make sure you're a part of that. And then on January the 2nd, which is our Sunday service, the first Sunday of the year, at 8.30, we're going to have 
our ministry training workshop. Everybody knows who's supposed to be a part of that. If you serve in any capacity of ministry or desire to be a part of serving in ministry, we'd love to have you at that workshop. They are phenomenal, and I believe it's going to bless your life real good. Amen? All right, so listen. Before we dive into the Word, I want to do something a little different because I don't want to miss the impartation that God is going to do for us at the end of the service. So I'm going to go ahead and allow us an opportunity to share in our offering, okay? I know it's a little different than what we normally do, but I want you to grab that mobile device and let's go ahead and give unto the Lord. We know what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. So help me honor the Lord in our giving today. Grab that mobile device and you can give all throughout the service. There are four ways that you can give to this local body of believers. You can download the Givelify app and look for builders of the faith. Look for my voice, my face, you hear my voice. <laughs> look for my face and follow the prompting. You can hear my voice is raggedy, right? But I know y'all praying for me. You can give them cash out at dollar sign BOTFCC. You can go to um, buildersofthefaith.com and give there. And you can always mail in <coughs> your contributions. The 5900 Ricker Road. Amen. So let's go ahead and give. Let's go ahead and give. And at the end of the broadcast, Elder Ricky will make sure that's up again for us so that you guys can jump in if those who catch on later. I wanted to do it up front. Because I, I don't want to miss the impartation. I, want, I believe God's going to say something to us. So I want to give us an opportunity to go ahead and give. Amen. Amen. So listen. You can already hear that my voice is leaving me. Every winter I go through this with a transition of where my voice starts leaving me in the winter and transition. So work with me today. As I try to share this message with you, I'm sipping on tea like crazy. And I want you to be able to be a part of that. So, Father, thank you for this moment in time that you've given us. Allow your word to penetrate the airways and reach the heart of your people, wherever they may view this at. Fill their lives with hope and expectation of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read one verse in your hearing today. The verse is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Amen. Amen. That's our verse for today. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. From the subject today, I need you to lean in and listen to me. From the subject today, demolition day. It's demolition day. Amen. It's demolition day. Thank you, Buster, so much. It's demolition day. And so here we are sitting on the last Sunday of this year. We're sitting in different places in our living rooms, wherever we may be at vacationing with family and friends. But we're here on this last Sunday of the year. It has been challenging on all fronts. You can already hear the strain and struggle in my voice. So I'm going to ask Buster just to give me a little bit more volume to make sure that you guys can hear me well. We have been tested in so many ways this year. And if we're honest, some tests we passed and some tests we need God to give us a do-over on. But nonetheless, the reality is we've made it until now. And the bottom line is this, no matter where you are 
in your life, the bottom line is this. God has once again kept us. He's kept us an entire year yet again. The good, the bad, the otherwise, the ugly, whatever you want to call it. God has once again come through for all of us and he has kept us. And for many of us, we just might be closer to God than we've ever been before. And I know that sometimes we find it very challenging to believe that God can use our tragedy, our suffering, our loss, and even our pain to bring us closer to him. But he does. And I want to share <coughs> this story with you. I want to share this story with you, and I want you to hear how God would use a tragedy to get us through and to bring us closer to him. Because God holds us even in our tragedy. I came across this, sto this story in my study and preparing for this week. And I thought it was really profound. I thought that it really blessed us and helped. It can make sense if you'll listen to it. <clears throat> so listen to this. When Anne got married, she gave up her Christian belief to, uh, that seemed to be irrelevant to her new life. Although Anne and her husband were very wealthy, their romance faded quickly, and soon she considered her marriage to be a disaster. But the lifestyle that she was living had its rewards. And she also adored her youngest son, TJ. She had once told a group of friends that if anything ever happened to TJ, they might as well lock her up somewhere. And so Anne had never sent her children to Sunday school and Paul watch this, the name of God was never mentioned in their house. And one day, to her surprise, her son TJ says, Mama, I love you more than anything in the world except God. I love him a little bit more. She was taken back and told him, that was okay as long as you love God more than you love me. But why, she wondered in her mind and pondered in her mind, why would he speak of God? Even more mysterious, why would he love a God whose name he had never heard mentioned from his mother's lips? Two days later, on one of the coldest days in their city's history, while TJ's sister was riding horseback, TJ fell through the ice on the creek. And coroners believe that he died instantaneously but it took the family an hour and a half to find him. The first words out of her aunt's mouth when she heard the news is, God, I hate you, shaking her fist at God. But even as she spit those words out of her mouth, she felt his warm embrace and his love around her. As her world begins to shatter all around her, she remembers another mysterious thing. She remembers that her son, TJ, was trying to, vividly and forcefully to give her a gift and she kept pushing it back it's not christmas yet just wait for it just wait for it and so she never got he never got a chance to give it to her and as soon as she got home from the stable she ran upstairs to the place where he was hiding his gift and she pulled it out and it was a necklace a beautiful necklace with a cross on it you see prior to the accident her husband had no religious belief but he cried out to God for help through this tragic pain. And God in his love begins to minister to them. And slowly, their old materialistic life melted away. Their marriage healed. And watch me, they became new creatures in Christ. God used their tragedy to bring them closer to him. So I want to say on this last Sunday of this year, that no matter where our lives have ended up looking like, what it has ended up looking like, no matter what has hit our families, no matter what we may have lost this year, God has kept us and he still has a great plan for our lives. And so I'm reflecting throughout this week, forgive me. And I remember at the beginning of this year, I mentioned a couple of things. One of the things that I mentioned was that we were created to live this amazing life with God. And I kept emphasizing with God. I also taught us that it's time to advance the kingdom, to come off of the sidelines, get back 
into the game of serving the kingdom of God because we are the light of the world. And as I begin to work this week, I begin to realize that we are approaching another end of the year. And every time, brothers and sisters, we get to come to an end of the year, I, my heart begins to stir with expectation. My heart begins to stir with expectation because there's so much potential. Please hear me. There's so much potential leading us into this new year. Now, I'm, I'm going to help you. We, there's potential for newness. There's potential for progress. And there's potential for a fresh start from all of the lessons that we've learned. And I know some people may say, well, Pastor, why would you bring up all that we've endured this year, all the pain and loss? And here is the real reason behind that. Because if we do not approach the end of the year with the right attitude, it can begin to hinder us as we move into the new year. I need you to hear that. I need you to hear that through this raspy voice and all of that. I need you to hear me again. If we do not approach the end of the year with the right attitude, it can hinder us as we begin to transition into this new year. What is the right perspective for the end of the year for every believer? I'm glad you asked. Watch me. Uh, 1 Thessalonians teaches us this. Ready? Here's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. Amen. This is so in everything that we've gone through this year, for everything that we've endured this year, for all that we struggled with and had to go through, we ought to give God thanks for it. And this is what the scripture says. This is the right perspective concerning where your life may be at right now to give God thanks. And so I'm going to need you to help me celebrate God by go ahead and post and thank you, Jesus, for this year. Just post it real quick because people need to know that we have the right attitude. Thank you for this year. Thank you for allowing me to go through this year. Thank you for allowing me to grow this year. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. You see, because it is through our praise and appreciation of what God has allowed us to go through. <clears throat> it is through the praise and appreciation of what God has allowed us to go through. It is through the appreciation of the lessons that we have learned. It is through the appreciation of the strength that we have gained that we begin to realize that it's all been a part of God's plan and it's all been a part of what God is setting us up for. Now, I come to speak prophetically into your life, and I'm going to work my way through this because I know what God wants to release into your life. And so I'm going to need you to lean in and really hear me and do not get distracted because I don't sound like my normal self. But let the Lord hear your heart today, amen? So we're going to celebrate God through everything that we've gone through, every lesson we've learned, and all the strength that we have been gained, that we've gained, because God has always been working, and God is still working even now. Always been working, and he's still working. Listen to one of my life verses, 1 Peter 5 and 10, from the New Living Translation. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you've suffered a little while, hallelujah, a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Hallelujah. After you've gone through a little bit, listen to that same verse from the Living Bible. After you've suffered a little while, our God, who is full of kindness, through Christ, will give you his eternal glory. He personally will come and pick you up and set you firmly in place and make you, hallelujah, stronger than ever. That, brothers and sisters, is God's plan. He says after, he, after you've gone through a little bit, he's going to come and place you in a firm place and make you stronger than you've ever been. 
after all we've been through this year. Hallelujah. I hope you can receive this by faith. We are now stronger than we've ever been. Did you hear me? After all we've endured this year, we are now stronger than we've ever been. Right? So I need you to hear this and receive this by the Spirit. You are strong enough to face your today because of what you have endured yesterday. I want you to get that in your heart. You're strong enough to face your today because of what you have endured yesterday. We can give God praise on that. So let me dive into my message today. Let me talk to you and leave this prophetic thing that's been resting on my heart all week long, maybe two weeks now. And here we go. I want you to hear this. I've always been fascinated by uh, the reality television approach to an extreme makeover. If you've ever watched it, like on the Today Show, how they have just picked some random lady out of the audience and they would begin to take her in the back and in the same show in the span of three hours, they'll bring this lady back with a new hairdo, new makeup, clothes, and accessory. The woman had just received an extreme makeover. I want you to consider this. In December the 20th, 2004, Time Magazine issue, they had an article about Extreme Makeover Home Edition. It told the story of Ann Harris of South Central. <coughs> she still remembers the day that the good people from ABC volunteered to, to demolish her house. You see, in 2003, a flood had left a community activist in her family who had no insurance living in this one-bedroom apartment. Worst of all, the water had ruined the stash of Christmas toys she had collected for the poor children living in a one-bedroom house. I apologize, right? So Harris said, I figured no one was going to come all the way to Watts to help us. No one had ever done it before. But the extreme makeover of people, they found her. And we know about Ty Pennington. He showed up with a group of 100 workers and neighbors. They tore her house down to the foundation and built a new, bigger one. That, my brothers and sisters, is an extreme makeover. All of the extreme makeover television show have something in common, and I need you to follow me with this. Here's the, they have like a one, two, three punch, if you will. The first thing is an outsider comes in with a one, two, three approach, right? First, the outsider sees the possibility that you couldn't see. Secondly, the outsider does what you couldn't do. And thirdly, the outsider pays for what you cannot afford to pay for. And today, I want to leave us with a few things as we begin to prep our hearts for this week. This is the last week of 2021. We are about to go into a consecration. And now I want to give us a word that will help set us up for the upcoming year. This is a very powerful opportunity, and I don't want you to miss what God is trying to do. I don't want us to mishandle the moment that God has set us up for and for everything that he wants to do in our life. So in order for that to happen, there are a few things that we're going to need to do before I give us these things. Here's the thing. Here's the first thing. You got to have the right attitude. We have to have the right attitude about everything that we've gone through this year and all that we've had to endure. You can't be shaking your fist at God mad about stuff in your life. Today, we got to have the right attitude that God was always working in my life. Secondly, we got to make sure that we have the right heart. You got to make sure that your heart is connected to God and that God is speaking to you. This relationship that you need with him. And thirdly, you got to have faith in all that God is and all, hallelujah, that he is able to do. So here we go. I'm going to give us five different things that I want us to set our hearts up for this week. Now, you got to work with me because I'm going to be popping cough drops and drinking tea to try to keep my voice together, okay? But don't let all of that distract you. Here is the first thing that I want you to realize if you're taking notes. God is in 
the extreme makeover business. I love that. He is in the business of transforming people's lives. This is what God does. The Bible is primarily a book of good news. It is the story of God's extreme makeover. Watch me on your behalf. The story starts in Genesis and it goes all the way to Revelation. It is a good news story about God who is totally other, who created us in his image. He created us with the capacity, watch me, to make decisions, to choose to go God's way, our way, or even Satan's way. And so that whenever we get off God's path, or whenever we succumb to the temptations of this fallen world, as soon as we turn to God, we become a candidate for his extreme makeover. That's good news for somebody. So I want you to listen to a few verses that shows that God is in the extreme makeover business. Mark the fifth chapter, beginning at verse number one. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of Garnissa. And when he had come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because he had been often bound with feathers and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the feathers broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountain in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thy son of the most, most high God? I do thee, and that I torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thy unclean spirit. And for those of us who know the rest of the text, the people in the community were afraid of this man. But Jesus gave this man an extreme makeover. In the latter part of that same chapter, we see where Jesus, where the people said, look, that can't be the same guy. He's sitting clothed in his right mind. Christ gave him an extreme makeover. Listen, John 5 beginning at verse number one. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there were at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda having five porches. In these lay great multitude of infant folk, a blind, halted and withered, waiting on the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever got in to the pool first at the troubling of the water stepped in and was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity to watch me 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lie, he knew how long he had been there in that case. He said unto him, these famous words, will you be made whole? An impotent man said, sir, I have no man when the water's trouble to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus said unto him, take up thy bed and walk. Christ gave this man an extreme makeover after 38 years in this condition. God specializes in giving extreme makeovers. Now listen to Acts 3. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple of the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man, watch this, laying from his mother's womb, was carried. They set him daily at the temple called Beautiful to ask arms or ask for money of them. Verse 3, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked in arms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him and said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something. He thought he was going to give us some money. Verse 6, Peter, Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to thee in the name 
of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up immediately and his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. And all other people saw him walking and praising God gave a man lame from his mother's womb an extreme makeover. These are just a few examples of God being in the makeover building business. The Bible is filled with so many examples of God showing his power to heal, to touch, and deliver. God has the power today. To, to be, he has the power today to begin to give you an extreme makeover. God does. I'm, I'm not sure how many people really can understand that. But I believe that if I gave you an opportunity to testify online, besides Robert, you can already see there are other people who can testify that he's done it to me. He's touched my life. He's healed me. I have had a makeover by God. Some of us know that people wouldn't even like us who we used to be. So we ought to thank God for the makeover that he's already given us. Here is number two. Are we ready? Here's number two. First, God is in the extreme makeover business. Second, you have to be chosen for the makeover. One of the shows that many people fell in love with a few years ago is called The Fixer Upper, right? It's a show about the tag team duo of Chip and Joanna Gaines. I absolutely loved it. I love this show. It's based out of Waco, Texas. And after the show began to take on popularity, people all around them wanted them, Chip and Joanna, to do their house. But in order for you to get onto the show, watch me, you had to be chosen. I'm not sure how many times I've preached this. But here we go again. Out of the billion of people on this planet, hallelujah, God has made choice of you. He's made choice of you. So watch this, that if you are securing your walk with God, that you are his child, and if you are living a life pleasing to him, then today you are eligible for an extreme Make over. Listen to John 15 and 16. You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That's whatsoever you ask in my father's name, he may give it unto you. <coughs> Are you listening to me? John 10 and 27. Listen to it. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall, watch me, any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. Watch me. Let me keep going. First Peter 2 and 9. You are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praise of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Can I get a few people who can hashtag, I've been chosen, I've been chosen. Let me do it. I want it. I ain't going to miss out on that. I've been chosen. I'm going to add something else on there. By God. You don't have to like it. But it is what it is. I've been chosen by God. God has made choice of me. God, who is an extreme makeover wizard, has handpicked me, selected me for an extreme makeover. And as I begin to prepare my life 
for this last week of this year. I need you to hear me. I'm going to go into this week and I'm going to begin to allow the father to do an extreme makeover in my life. Hallelujah. Let me sip on my tea again. I see you. I see you. I've been chosen. I see you. Post it. Share it. Let's make the devil mad this morning. Let's make him mad. Oh, Pop, I see you. Bishop Hooker, I see you. I've been chosen by God. I see you, Mary. I've been chosen by God. So let me keep moving. Here, here. It's number three. Now, you got to catch me. God is in the extreme makeover business. You have to be chosen to be, to get an extreme makeover. And here is number three. Y'all forgive me. Work with me now. Watch this. God sees possibilities in you and me that we're not apt to see in ourselves. You got to catch that. God sees our potential in areas that we don't even see. Remember, this is God's business. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he has in place. He knows, he knows what he's placed on the inside of you. Who am I talking to? God knows what he's placed on the inside of you. And that, now, because I'm telling you, I feel this. Watch this. The next door that God has for you is probably the biggest door you've ever walked through. But all of the hell that you've endured in your past has prepared you for this next makeover. I need you to get that in your spirit. The next door that God is getting ready to walk you through is probably the biggest door that you've ever gone through. But all of the hell that you've endured has prepared you for this next makeover. Somebody shout glory. I'm going to say Glory. I'm, I don't even know how I'm posted it. I'm going to say glory too. Glory. It's the biggest door that you're getting ready to walk through. It's the biggest opportunity that God has been setting you up for. And everything that you've been doing, all that you've gone through, has been preparing you for this. Here is what I need you to realize, right? God's in the extreme makeover business. God has chosen you. God sees in us what we cannot see in ourselves. <coughs> so let me give you some practical stuff. Something that I sent over to Elder Ricky earlier um, this week. Watch this. When we moved into this property, the building is, is over 50 years old, right? And most of the people, when they come now, to get an opportunity to see some of the remodeling that we've done. So I asked Elder Ricky to, to start showing you guys some more. I don't know how you're going to give it to me. He bringing me some more tea. So if y'all see Jamal head, don't mind him. I'm sure that's my wife trying to get me straight. Thank you, sir. I asked Elder Ricky to begin to show you guys some of what the foyer used to look like. Look at that. Look at some of these pictures that's online right now. This is what our foyer used to look like. He can, you can just keep sliding through them, Ricky. I don't know. They kind of bored that one over hell. <laughs> 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 look at what the foyer used to look like, right? This is what the foyer that everybody, this is not what everybody see now. And so everybody used to see in the coffee shop, leave that one up right there, Rick, the nicely decorated foyer, the nice furniture in place, the nice color scheme, the, all the crown molding and all of that stuff. But what you don't realize is that how God has gifted people with the gift, like that picture right there, right? So you, right, watch me. 
So we could not see what to do with the foyer that would make it what it is today. The father allowed us to hire an interior designer who walked in and saw the potential of our church's foyer where we couldn't see it. That's Brenda Tate. Brenda stood in the middle of the foyer and just looked around and she began and her mind begins to see this possibility of what it could be. And this is what I love about an extreme makeover is that everybody gets to experience the newness without ever being able to taste of the oldness. When God does something in you, when he gives you an extreme makeover, the people who are going to bump into bump into you after this are not going to even be able to remember what it once was. This is what happens. So Brenda took that for you, took the 50-year face that was on it and gave it a facelift. And now when you walk into our for you, you see a building that is beginning the stages of a makeover. God knew what we needed. Some of us are struggling right now. Because we can't see what God sees in us. And let me help you. Many times, the people around us can't see what God is doing in us. So you got to realize and trust that the Father knows that there's something different about you. How many people can post there's something different about me? I'm not like everybody else. There's something unique to my life. There's something God is doing uniquely in my life. I'm different than you. I'm not trying to be like you. I'm not trying to act like you. God has a call on my life. And while I may not understand it, <coughs> God knows exactly what he's doing in my life. I love that. I'm different. I'm different. And I'm glad that I'm different. Let me post that too. I'm glad I'm different. I'm glad I'm unique. I see you, Regina. I'm glad I see you, Snookums. I'm glad there's something different about me. I'm glad that God can see the possibility in me where I can't see it myself. There's something different about me. I'm not the same person. I'm not like you. Woo! I almost, almost say touch your neighbor, but we ain't got no neighbors with us. I'm not like you. I'm different. God wired me different. I see things differently. I receive stuff differently. Hallelujah. Some people ain't even receiving this word this morning because you're weird like that. But some of us, we, we understand that God is speaking to us. It's the last week of this year, and God is telling you, you're different. I made you different. I set you up differently. I'm going to bless you differently. I'm going to do something unique in your life. And I'm going to do it even when you can't see it. I see it in you. Hallelujah. I'm different. I'm different. I'm, re I'm different. I'm different. I see you, Shannon. I see you. I see you, Johnny. I see you, Dion. I'm different. Stop trying to be like me. I'm different. Hallelujah. There's something different about me. And God, who is my extreme makeover person, sees the possibilities in me, even when you can't see it yourself. Let me keep moving. Here is number four. God is able to do for you and me what we cannot do for ourselves. When you begin to talk about the skill set that it takes to walk into a space like our church for you and see it as a blank canvas, that's skill. That's a gifting. Or when you can look at a person and say, man, even though they lived their lives like this for 30 plus years, I see something different in them. That's a gift. So let me help you to understand this, that God has the power to break, to break years of bad choices and conditioning. Simply put, God is able. He's able. We cannot change ourselves. We cannot fix ourselves. And we probably can't even see the change that we need to make. But God has the skill set, the anointing, the power 
to change us for this extreme makeover. I wonder if I got anybody on there besides Robert that want an extreme makeover. I'm going to write. I'm going to post. I want an extreme makeover. I want an extreme I want an extreme makeover. I, I want an extreme makeover. God is able. God is able. Here's number five, and I'm almost done, y'all. <clears throat> I want an extreme makeover. I do. I do. Here, here, here is number five. God is able to pay the price for what he does. You see, Jesus has already paid the price for our extreme makeover. We can't afford it, the price he paid for it. And so take it from someone who, who has paid for a few makeovers. They are costly. You pay for the skill set, the person's wisdom and their ability to do what they do. But thanks be to God who has assured us because of Christ that we can have an extreme makeover through his son. Listen, Christ already paid the price. Listen to 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. For you've been bought with a price. As that price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Today I came to stir our faith to cause us to see that we can come as we come to the end of this year and as we begin to prepare for the new one, that we can lean in on this prophetic message. Are you ready? This is something that has already been released into this house. You got to grab it again. You got to catch it all the way in your living room, all the way at your house. This time it's going to be different. I am standing on that word, this time is going to be different. I know that we've been here many times before. I know that we've approached this last week of the year many times before, but I need you to receive that into your heart this morning. This time is going to be different. Our text says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. The text says, if we are in Christ, then we are a new creature. My brothers and sisters, that is an extreme makeover. Our text today, watch me, if you can catch it by the Spirit, is filled with all kinds of possibilities and potential. Now, I want to be clear. I want you to lean in and hear me. <coughs> this is not how I envision delivering this message today. This is not the way that I saw us doing this. I envision us in our sanctuary sharing this message with enthusiasm and fire and fervency. I envision us receiving this message with joy and I set up a whole demonstration to even symbolically represent what we were going to do today. But I want you to be clear and hear me clearly that I also remember messages that I preach, right? I want you to remember Acts the 12th chapter that our great enemy Satan will reach out to vex certain ones of the church, certain members of the church and I felt like this week the enemy has been trying to vex me all the way up until last night. So I was determined today, and I want you to hear me. I was determined today to preach this with whatever voice I had, whatever strength I had, because the enemy, the only reason he tries to vex us is to silence us. And whenever we make up our mind that we're not going to let the enemy stop us, even in raggedy conditions, even in broken conditions, even in not the best circumstance, 
we give glory to the power of God. So the word of the Lord, though it may not have been the way that I envisioned it, it has been released. And it is in your spirit. And God will deal with you according to it. But I want to encourage other believers around me that when the enemy tries to vex you, hallelujah, when he shows up to try to get you to silence your voice or silence your testimony or silence your preaching, you must persevere and keep going forward. It may not be the way that you thought it was going to be, but you can still give God some glory in it and let the enemy know that we'll do whatever we have to do, but we're going to keep serving God. And so while I couldn't do it the way that I wanted to do it, I refused to let the enemy stop me. Because what did I say? Prayer helps us to recognize when the devil is trying to mess with us. So I want you to stay focused on your assignment. The text says, is, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Buster, you can help me. I'm closing out. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. That message in Christ speaks to relationship. There is no extreme makeover without a relationship with God through Christ. So you have to be in Christ so that you can have that connection to God who has the power to give us all an extreme makeover. All things, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, right? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Old, O-L-D, old things are passed away. My focus on this week this is the, one of the main things that I kept focusing on this week. What I love about the extreme makeover, especially when I would see Chip Gaines get ready for a makeover, he would get very excited. And if you watch most extreme makeover shows, they would get very excited about demolition day. They would get very excited about being able to tear down things that are hindering the vision to demolish stuff that's been holding them back, holding back the vision. See, there's some things in our lives that we need God to completely demolish so that he can begin our extreme makeover. That's why the day for me is demolition day because I need God to demolish everything in my life, hallelujah, that's hindering my extreme makeover. I want to go into the new year with a clean slate with fresh beginnings. But in order for that to happen, there needs to be a demolition day. Today, God is calling to all of us and say, hey, I'm ready to give you an extreme makeover. Are you ready for me to start my demolition? Will you destroy all of the wrong attitudes, bad relationships, bad mindset, bad hearts, so that I can begin to knock all of that down so that I can begin to build you back up and give you a brand new extreme makeover. God, by his power, is ready to remove everything that's hindering us. Today, God, get rid of all the old stuff and begin to replace it with something new. Give me an extreme makeover. So once again, here we are. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Can we post it again? I want an extreme makeover. Let today be your demolition day. I see you, Tanisha. I see you, Shakita. Kita. I see you, son. I see you, Micaiah. Come on. I'm waiting on you. I'm posting. I'm looking for you. I want an extreme makeover. I see you, daughter. That's Tanisha. I see you, Toya. Yes, sir, Ben. 
We all want an extreme makeover. I want an extreme makeover. Juan, yes. Yes, I want an extreme makeover. Nardis, yeah. Today is my demolition day. Omar Jones, man, son, I love you. Yeah. Johnny, I see you. Sandra. Kiera, I see you, baby. I want an extreme makeover. Regina, Paula. Come on, this is your opportunity. Amp, I see you, man. Lisa, come on. Lay your hands on your heart. So this is this is what this is where the demolition starts at. This is where it begins at. Father, do a work in our hearts. Do a work in our lives. Lord, do something great in us. We want an extreme makeover. We need you to begin to our demolition today. Demolish everything that's not like you. Uproot everything that's not like you. Help us in the name of Jesus. I want an extreme makeover. Let today be my demolition day. As this week progresses, Father, I pray that you would deal with each of us. Tear down those areas in our lives that is blocking us from having this extreme makeover that you want to give us. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Come on. Yes, glory to God. Now listen, we gave at the beginning of the service, so if you jumped on late, Elder Rick is going to put up how you can give to this local body of believers. I pray that this week you would allow God to speak to you. And you'll go back and listen to this again. And allow it begin to change who you are and the direction of your life. To know that it doesn't matter how long you've been the way that you've been. Our God specializes in the extreme makeover. That you will remember you've been chosen by God. And we would begin to remember that God sees in us the possibilities that we can't even see ourselves and that God has the skill set to change everything and that God is able to fix all in the wonderful name of Jesus. I love you so much and I pray that God will bless you. Remember the announcements. Tuesday night is virtual service. Saturday morning, January the 1st, is a corporate face down communion service as we kick off our 21 day consecration. And I pray that you'll join us on Sunday morning, January the 2nd, as we begin to start the new year together as a body of believers. Amen. Ministry training workshop, 8 30 that morning. I love you so much. Enjoy the rest of your time with your family. God bless you. We'll see you on Tuesday night. We love you.